All right, welcome in. It's Hannah time. Global Sports Broadcasting Network. Cornelius Bradley, Hannah. Got a lot to talk about. Baseball. We love this time of the year. It's October. Getting close to who's going to be making it towards the World Series big run as we're trying to get it down to like the final four of baseball. We got two in and two more teams to try to find their way in uh, this week and tomorrow is the final one on Saturday. We'll talk about today's game, tomorrow's game, football, football news. Somebody's engaged in football with a famous singer, hint, hint, right? We'll talk all about that. Coming up, we're going to give you that uh, 30 second countdown. You want that 30? Let's go for it. Here we go. One, two, three, four, go. Welcome back in Hannah time on Global Sports Broadcasting Network. Cornelius Brad Hannah, your host. And uh, we're going to talk baseball right off the top because it's uh, it's October. And uh, this is the best time of the year for baseball is the playoff time. And we're now getting closer towards the World Series. And who's going to get there? We got two teams that are one step away from getting into the World Series. And we got four teams battling it out. A game today in the National League. And a game tomorrow in the American League. And some, we're going to find out. We're going to find out who are, is all going through the weekend, who's going to go to the American League and the National League Championship Series that will decide who gets to the World Series. And that's, uh, well, who's in it right now? Well, the Mets got in and they, uh, I wouldn't say they shocked the world, but the, the Miracle Mets uh, barely got into the playoffs. Good team. And they're hot. And, as we know, when it comes to playoff time in certain sports, uh, you get hot in the, in the playoff time. It goes a long way. And we've seen some big stories over the years. Football, baseball, hockey, name a few. But uh, last night, the New York Yankees took care of business, and it was a big celebration in Kansas City as the Yankees take out the Royals and a, uh, an old history rival that uh, taken a few decades to get it back. But the Yankees took care of business and uh, it was a tough battle. Every game was kind of close, but the Yankees take the series three games to one. They're celebrating the Bronx. Very exciting about that for them. They're going to go into the American League Championship Series and uh, they keep getting there. Is this their ticket to get to the World Series with the Aaron Judge and all that? Um, it's, it's on the doorstep really is. Uh, the big hero for the Yankees continues to be a guy that takes a lot of heat. A lot of heat. But last night, he hits this, uh, an another one, a big monster hit, big game, two hits, a uh, couple of RBI or an RBI itself. But uh, the Yankees are coming around with roles of different players each game. They're a very talented team. And they have yet to actually put it together. And if they do, they're going to score a lot of runs, but it's just, it's just a team that just has guys, role players, or big stars that can put it together consistently. And uh, like Soto, like Judge, right? They're, they're, they're going to be pretty consistent. Judge got his first hit in the series last night, but they're going to go on and, and to the American Championship Series. It's going to be starting in Yankee Stadium. And who are they going to play, the New York Yankees? We know the Mets are in by taking out the Phillies. So there's a New York, New York flavor building up in the – in the Big Apple. But who are they going to face? Well, in the American League, the other divisional series, I should say, Cleveland and Detroit is now going to a game five on Saturday. And Detroit at home had a chance. Uh, they were, it was a great game. Cleveland hangs in there, pulls it off. Fun to watch baseball October. But the uh, Guardians, the I said Indians, uh, oh well. <laughs> but the Guardians and Cleveland themselves are going to host game five on Saturday. Winner of this game 
Detroit and Cleveland will go on to Yankee Stadium, play game one of the American League Championship Series, and uh, we'll move on from there. But very exciting. Um, baseball, a couple of game five in their divisional uh, series itself. But uh, the other one has a lot of hot going on, too. If you're a National League fan, you know, we got the Mets waiting in the wings like this and uh, two teams. San Diego, L.A., I mean, <laughs> we know there's a rival there. Division Wilds, they're going to a fifth game. Dodger Stadium. Uh, th th this is going to be a fun game to watch today. If you love baseball or you're looking for something to do, this is going to be a fun electric game in Dodger Stadium. Winner will go and play the New York Mets. And uh, we'll find out who it's going to be. Can it be two wild card teams? San Diego and the Mets. Wild card teams. Dodgers won their division. Now, if the I from what I understand too, if San Diego wins, they will be hosting Game One of the National League Championship Series against the Mets. Dodgers win, they'll host it. So it's going to end up being in California. From what I understand by reading, it's going to be in California, where the Mets are going to have to make their way out there. They may have already flown out to California. It's going to either going to be L.A. or San Diego, <laughs> okay? But baseball is now getting to it, and great markets. Um, it's been a great postseason for them, for baseball. And you know what they want or they would like, you know, but they, they, they've got something. If the Yankees win, they're going to have a very special World Series. Although San Diego is a great baseball team. They are a really good baseball team. Dodgers know it. Dodgers are fighting away, fighting to get through this. And the Mets are just hot. I mean, incredibly hot. But we'll have to wait. We don't want to ignore Cleveland and Detroit. Right? But I'm excited for this weekend to find out the final four teams, the National League and the American League. And then we're getting closer to the big World Series. And it could be a very popular big city kind of thing. Um, it doesn't happen too often. And uh, we'll see. We're just going to keep it right there and leave it right there for now. But I love baseball, so it's, uh, you know, one thing about what I have seen in all the games of watching the playoffs is the umpires. Balls and strikes. I am baffled about how poorly there are calling balls and strikes. Not like every pitch, but there are some called strikes that are not even close. And I know I'm not the only one. And I don't know. It, it, it's it gets back to are they is this manipulation it, or is this just bad umpires? Is this the best they they can produce out there? There's no excuse. It really is not an excuse. It, it's just too way offline to call it a strike, right? I mean, even even the guys on TV are trying to like not make it out, but you know they're trying to kiss a little button with the umpires and be good with the major league baseball stuff, but. Uh, they also are kind of going, Ugh. right? Uh. <laughs> right? That it's not, it's not good for the game. Not good. And if this is your best, uh, doesn't say much. But is it something else going on? I, I, I mean, pe fans are talking about it. Is it is it trying to manipulate something for the game so they can have a great finish, a great highlight? Uh, is it a fix? I mean, if it was, I mean, I can't go that far. But fans see it, and that's what they're going to think, though. I just can't believe umpires are calling strikes that are not even close. And they've been doing this, you know, this is a career. This is the best of the best, supposedly. Not good for baseball. Not good if you're watching it. If it leads further into the World Series or more eyes are watching it, if it's a big, you know, say it's L.A., New York, right? There's a lot, a lot of people watching that, even if you don't like them. It's just something to watch, right? All right, let's talk more, a little bit more baseball itself. You know, we talked about the Mets itself. You know, the big game today also is going to be the, the Padres and the Dodgers. Um, all eyes will be watching this. Uh, I am. I mean, it's it's going to be electric in Dodger Stadium itself. Uh, the pitchers in this game are, for the first time in baseball history, you know, we have two Japanese pitchers pitching against each other, all right? Uh, and it's, it's a game five, right? It's winner take all. So uh, a very classic, historic, 
memorable matchup. I know the people in Japan are probably excited about this. And, uh, you know, uh, Yakamoto, uh, Yamamoto and um, Darvish going at it. So here we go. Uh, Japan, L.A., California, baseball fans are all going to be locked in on this game. Winner goes to the World Series against the New York Mets, and there'll be a home game for them in California. So, And think about this, too. Coming for baseball and TV and all that, you're going to be traveling cross-country here. Uh, in the National League, I mean, and if 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 an American League team wins, a uh, National League in California wins, like the Padres or the Dodgers get to the World Series, then you're just gonna have a lot of travel. And I remember working the let's see, 2015 World Series was it? Yeah, Texas and St. Louis. Right, that wasn't bad. Central. But it's, it's a lot of work, a lot of travel, and, and it, it puts a lot. I mean, I'm sure the networks don't mind because they'll be getting some great markets, but there's a lot behind the scenes that has to go on. And uh, it's something I'm going to be watching and, and, and feeding into to see how things are going with Fox Sports. I know some people that work over there, and, and I still work with them. Um, if that ever happens, wow, that is a lot of work. It's going to stretch them out a little bit. If it's New York and L.A. or New York and San Diego, even if it's Cleveland and, Cal and going to California for one of the teams, or if it's Detroit, it's a flight. All right, we'll move on. But that's nice for baseball either way. All right, um, the one thing I did notice about uh, postseason so far in baseball is these, uh, these shirts and, and, and the players are representing their hometown. And here's one. Um, it's Tucson. Tucson, Arizona <laughs> itself. I, I just think it's fantastic that baseball um, is connecting to hometown heroes, basically. Especially in the playoffs where fans who grew up and played ball or watched or whatever it was locally in the Little League stuff. Um, it's fantastic that they did this. Um, if you're from Tucson, Arizona, I mean, you know, it, it, ironically, there's two players on the New York Yankees, um, that are from, you know, Wells, the catcher, it went to U of A and this gentleman right here grew up in high school, went to high school in Tucson. So there's a little Tucson, Arizona connection for the Yankees in baseball in the playoffs itself. But, uh, I, I think that's great. Um, and it, it, you know, you don't even have to be a ball player to buy it and represent. If you're from that city, it's a great thing, <laughs> kind of cool to wear. Um, all right, moving on a little bit more. And this is still a baseball before we move on to some of the other stuff. And I got some boxing news to talk about, uh, not news news, but really cool stuff. Um, all right, so you're talking about prices of tickets. This is something wild. Um, the Dodgers and the Yankees, you would think, probably would have had the most expensive tickets for the playoffs, for playoff baseball. They're not. They're at the bottom. The Dodgers are at the very bottom. The Yankees are from the second to last. The top teams, Philadelphia, the Padres, the Mets, the Royals. See, the, even the Royals, you know, this is hilarious <laughs> how this all works. And, and you can debate and argue whatever you want. But um, the teams that people say, oh, they have all the money. Well, there's a lot of teams that have a lot of money. They all have a lot of money, okay, uh, in baseball. They really do. You know, we can get into that topic another day about owners and spending money. Whew. They all spend money. They all have it. They all do. It just depends who wants to spend it and who doesn't. That's what it comes down to. But uh, I thought this was a nice stat, um, you, you know, to see how tickets are being sold for playoff baseball. And L.A. and New York, the Yankees and Dodgers are at the bottom. Put in your own words and what you may think about it and whatever it is. I'm just putting it out there for you. <laughs> I, just, I thought that was unique and different, too, from what everybody thinks really what it would have been like. Right. You would think the Dodgers or the Yankees are going to be the most spending and pulling all the money in because they need that money i guess right um here are two uh boxers we're gonna get into boxing right now um mike tyson all right uh, we got to be excited about big old mike getting into but here's something I, mean, I love this photograph by the way mike's in his 50s going up against a young big fighter who i kind of like actually uh this is a great photograph 
fight will be taking place in Dallas at the base at the football stadium where the Cowboys are. It's November 15th, and a little side bet is coming up between them. Uh, you know, Paul going up against Tyson itself. And, you know, we know Jake Paul loves to fight, and he's very popular, and people love him or hate him. But um, this is what he put out there. He's going to give up $5 million to Mike Tyson. If Mike Tyson can get past the fourth round, this is what I don't know if this is all fun and game or whatever it is, but uh, it, it's uh, definitely bringing a lot of attention because Mike Tyson is a always been a big draw for attention. But uh, if you can last more than four rounds with me, this is what Paul is saying to Mike Tyson. I'll give you an extra five million dollars. So Paul, this is what he's saying, who has been uh, wearing a, a fat suit in his fight uh, promotion, basically, uh, videos for the past several weeks. So he's all into it. Uh, he's enjoying the, the experience with it. It looks like both these fighters are enjoying the promotion of it. But again, the big fight is uh, November 15th, a Friday night fight. Uh, I know a lot of people are going to watch this. Uh, there's th These, in a weird way for boxing, Mike Tyson... It, Continues to be a big draw. Look at the body he's in. That's, that's, that's what he looks like. He's in incredible shape in his 50s. Um, can he win the fight over Paul? A young guy. Oh, he's, he's a good fighter. He's a good boxer. But I don't think he's going to... He's never experienced what Mike Tyson knows what to do in the ring. The only thing that people are going to question is, can Mike Tyson last a long bout, a long fight? You know, can he get past the fourth or fifth round, right? And, and and does he tire out? And that's what something, that's what I'm looking for. I mean, it, it's really going to come down to the fact that Mike Tyson can last a full fight and not get worn down and tired. Um, and then maybe, maybe Jake Paul can take it to him and find a way to win or, you know, score a lot of points and win the fight in the decision or whatever it may be. I don't think he's knocking down Mike Tyson unless Mike is completely tired. But what's your take on it? What's your take on the, this fight? It's, you know, boxing needs a big, a big, uh, a big push, a big, uh, a big fight. Is it a championship fight? No. But, you know, <laughs> people talking about it. And uh, it doesn't mean boxing is just going to get back on the top scene again. It's, uh, it's, it's falling behind a lot of ways. And it's a guy like Mike Tyson. Um, Doing it once again to bring a lot of attention. I know a lot of people are going to watch it. They want they, they want to see this event that a fifty year old fighter going up against a, another young guy who's not a bad fighter. Jake Paul's not a bad fighter, folks. Uh, he he's definitely got some skills. That I it's just what's going to happen. I think Mike will still win. Um, I just Mike is a fighter. He's a boxer. He you know the other guy. Uh, Paul's a good fighter. What's your take on it? I love to hear it. I love to know, uh, you know, it, just try to separate. You don't like Paul or you don't like Tyson. Just try to really put it down. What you've witnessed with Paul over these last few years with fighting and boxing that he's been in and how he's looked. And now, you know, Mike Tyson, we have only seen a couple of exhibition fights and not too bad for a guy and in, in whatever it is, but, um, he looks more incredible now than he has when he was in his prime. And it comes down to conditioning and can Mike last a long time, body and things like that. And, and can Jake Paul do it? You know, I mean, it's a, it's a great topic, a great discussion to have with people. Because um, when you get hit and you get a little knocked around a little bit by a Mike Tyson punch here and then, and I, Mike hits hard still, uh, that, that definitely can change the, mo uh, the whole perplexion of the fight the rest of the way. Um, but we'll see. I, it's, it's, I have to watch this. <laughs> I think a lot of people want to watch it. I, and it's a great one for the sport of boxing too. So, all right, let's, um, let's dabble in a little bit more towards, uh, football now. And I know some fans are, are, uh, really, uh, trying to figure out how this season's being played out. Who is really that good? Who is really the team that really... Washington right now it looks like the team that just has it together. They got not just a hot quarterback. He's a rookie, but playing the game like he's been there forever. I mean, it's incredible what he's doing. Um, 
Washington is right now the best team so far starting the season in the NFL. Every game they played, they look unbeatable. They, 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 it just some magical is happening right now. Can it last? It's still early. We got a long ways to go, right? I mean, we're only gone, you know, a month of football so far, but we'll get into a few of the hot games of this week. I'm only going to go through the top games of this week, the best matchups I feel and uh, what to look for and talk about a little bit. Um, we'll get in that a little in a, in a few minutes here, but um, I got to throw this story out real quick in Pittsburgh George Pickens um, was wearing, you know, some eyeshadow stuff, you know, whatever they put on their underneath their eyes, you know, and he had a message on it. And it said, open the effing uh, always. OK, open effing always. And basically what he's saying, I'm always open. You can't cover me. That's what he's saying. You're, uh, but for whatever reason, you know, under his black spot, the NFL is investigating. NFL is investigating this whole. I I I don't think it's deserving. I don't think he deserves to be anything. I don't know why they would even try to scold him on this, as if he did something wrong. Uh, open effing always. I is it because of the language? F you know. Ah, uh, if that's the case, I guess so. I mean, if there's some rules to that. Um, but you know, nobody even said anything. You know, I don't. The cameras may have picked it up, but. You know, that's maybe what they're avoiding. But, you know, we can hear players cursing on the field and they don't get penalized or fined for that, for what we know. So if, if it's about the word effing and people were able to see it, um, fans can hear a lot of cursing on the sidelines live at the games. And the cameras can also the audio on the cameras also can pick up some stuff too. So uh, I mean there is a delay, right? And they may maybe they do it. There've been times that they have not, you know, used a 7 second delay or whatever se seconds they use these days now, but um uh I don't think it's deserving for him to be fined for something like that if if it's, you know, just give him a warning, you know, tell him don't do it again. Uh, unless there's some written rule in there. But if you're going to do that, then make sure your players are not cursing on the field and that cameras can pick it up or, you know, mouthing words. I mean, I, it's, it's, a, it's amazing. I, I, you know, we just watched baseball tonight and the New York Yankees clinched, uh, well, I mean, clinched. They, yeah, they went on to the American League Championship Series. They beat the Royals. And the final out was a fly ball to center field to Aaron Judge. And the cameras are right on him. And you can literally see the words coming out of his lap. You know, you can't hear it, but you can definitely see it. And they played it twice. And he says, let's effing go. That's, I mean, he, he, he didn't say effing. He literally said the F word, okay? <laughs> he literally, I mean, you can see it. The lips, the mouth. I mean, it's right on TV, national TV. Does he get fined? Does baseball do that? No. I'd be surprised. Right? The cameras did it. The cameras caught it. It's the emotion of the game. Writing on your, you know, you know, your brow of your, or, you know, uh, as he did. You know, I mean, if you want to look at it again, I don't know if it, the camera doesn't really show on this photograph. But, you know, but George Pickens just, uh, just give him a warning and walk away. NFL, come on. It's it's there's a lot worse stuff going on out there, and speaking in Pittsburgh, you know they have a quarterback issue that's really stewing a lot of issues. They're three and two. They've lost two in a row. They got a lot of love after five games. Uh, in the quarterback position right now, for what they're going through. But this is the guy right here. This is the guy. Where is Pittsburgh going when it comes to? This rest of the season. Is it the guy on the camera right now? The veteran, the Super Bowl winner, twice to a Super Bowl, much better passer and quarterback in that aspect. I'm sure he can hand the ball off. Pittsburgh has got to make a decision 
Uh, they're not scoring points. They need a, they need somebody to get the ball downfield more and, and <laughs> a lot. And uh, I think the old veteran Pittsburgh is the guy. I believe it needs to get done. And if it doesn't happen this weekend, it sh- it, if the Steelers don't beat the Raiders um, or it doesn't look good and they win, it, it you got to make the, you got to pull the plug after six weeks. You got to pull the plug. Um, all right, that's one story in Pittsburgh. I'm sure they're excited about the potential. Uh, going four and two, but uh, it hasn't been pretty and hasn't been, yeah, hasn't been, you know, to be four and two uh, and not even scoring points. Pittsburgh knows it. The NFL knows it. The fans know it too. All right. We're going to move on to other things around the NFL right now. Um, Games to look at, to watch this weekend, Tampa Bay and uh, the Buccaneers, the Saints, first place stuff. Tampa Bay, can can distance themselves from a team in the Saints. They don't have a they have a quarterback issues in, in New Orleans. Uh, Tampa Bay has a, a pretty good team, but they're not consistent to put together a hot streak and win a bunch of games. This is their chance to separate and push themselves away and separate themselves a little bit from New Orleans as a long season ahead of us. But uh, going into uh, you know the sixth game of the season, this is week six of the NFL. And uh, I'm going to lean on Tampa because of the quarterback situation in New Orleans. We'll see how it plays out. And, and the Saints haven't been as consistent that, uh, consistent as uh, uh, we thought they would be so far this season. But uh, it's a long way to go. We'll find out. Cardinals, Packers. What Cardinal team is showing up? After what we saw against the 49ers, who won last night, uh, Scored a lot of points, the Niners. Cardinals <laughs> did not give up a lot of points to them. I mean, where are we? Where are the Cardinals? Um, quarterback situation, right? Are they going to come out of the gates and score points early like they do in the first quarter and then just disappear and try to find a way to fight their way back in? Or is Green Bay a team with uh, their quarterback who gets hurt now making his way back and getting into rhythm? Uh, how would you look at this game, both teams? I mean, Packers can go four and two. And it hasn't been even that pretty of a four and two season if they get that point. They're at home. And the Cardinals, if they find a way to win, they're three and three, and it's been ugly. But that's the NFL. It's it's been ugly. Even the Kansas City Chiefs, it's been ugly. It's been ugly. <laughs> right? Scores in the NFL. Everything comes down to the wire anyway. You have it that all played out pretty good. All right. Uh Washington, the team I was telling you about, up against uh, you know, close. They're about, I don't know how many miles apart, like 30, 30 minutes apart. I don't know how. Baltimore, the Ravens, and D.C., I mean, they're basically neighbors, right? It's it's like Brooklyn and Manhattan, right? It's like the Bronx and Brooklyn, New York, right? It's it's like uh, uh, Anaheim and Los Angeles, I mean, no, or San Diego and L.A., right? I mean, I'm just trying to get – this is two teams, good record, Ravens, you know, first place team right now. Uh, Washington, first place team looking really good. Probably the best team so far I've seen so far after week f- uh, five weeks of football. Um, I love them. I'm definitely looking forward to watching this game. I, I like to see if Washington can uh, continue what they've been doing. Uh, I don't think Boston, I mean, Boston, Baltimore uh, is the Ravens is actually the team they are predicted to be. I think they got a lot of issues there. And um, I wouldn't be surprised if Washington goes 5-1. I would not be surprised. All right. Uh, a game about two teams where coaches are going. Uh, um, there may be another firing in the NFL. The Jets fired their head coach. Right, Browns and Eagles. Browns are 1-4. They go 1-5. Like, we still got a ways to go, right? You know, they got 11 more, oh, no, 11 more games uh, Yeah, to go in the season. But uh, doesn't look good if they go one and four. The Eagles, two and two, a lot of people had a lot of hope on them, but it's not looking good for the, even the Eagles. A lot of turmoil. A lot of questions about head coaches in the NFL, and, and you're going to start to hear about it after this weekend, especially from this game. Somebody's going to lose this game, and what, whoever loses this game is going to be in the hot seat. Okay, let's look at the hot seat right now. Okay, uh, Eagles head coach 
dealing with the you know the the, the Robert Saleh firing situation as that once somebody gets fired in the NFL, it seems like it stirs it up. Um, the fact that the season is longer now, still got eleven games to go. You know, after this weekend, um, you still got a shot if you can kind of keep it relatively close record near five hundred. You, you got a great shot. Okay, Eagles going two and three. That it season's not dead and over. You know, but going two and four, I should say. But if they go three and three, they win. It'd be a little bit more quiet in Philly. But this is the situation right now. A lot of pressure. A lot of pressure going on. Right. Um, the Jets firing their head coach um, wasn't like they had a horrible record. I'm hearing rumors about something else that um, Robert Soleil, the former head coach on the New York Jets, was wearing a a t shirt. He's Lebanese. OK, and there's a war a battle or you know, going on in the Middle East right now. And uh, he was wearing a I love you Lebanese T-shirt from Lebanon or and from what I just heard and reading today uh, this morning is that uh, the NFL didn't like it or somebody didn't like it and put pressure. And this caused him to be fired. I don't know if that's a real one, but. Politics and sports has always been around. I don't know why he got fired. It wasn't like the Jets' where season has been horrible. They've had a couple of really good games and been pretty rough. They almost won last week too. So like, it's not like a deserving of a firing, unless there's something else going on. But um, I just wanted to put that out there for you because I heard that, and uh, you know, the fighting going on in the Middle East right now, and Lebanon is um, been attacked. And I think a lot of people are not happy about it. And some people will have other opinions. But he, Robert Soleil, the New York Jets, former New York Jets head football coach, which I think is a, I, I like him as a head coach. I think he's a great defensive mind too, what he did in San Francisco. But if he was wearing a shirt, I love Lebanon or I support Lebanon and things like that, then let it be. I mean, like the NFL is going after anything, it's like, chill out. I mean, for what you do already, the NFL, you know, it's like, is it justified, <laughs> right? Um, so you're going to go after a wide receiver in Pittsburgh for wearing the F word on his, uh, I call it eye makeup, but uh, it's just, you know, if he gets fined. And now, you know, does Soleil get forced to be fired? All right, so had a little issue there, but it, it, when you get back to the NFL itself, it's it's really gotten to the point where too much, way too much going on when they're always being too hard and too critical, politics involved. You got to chill out. The NFL has got to, I mean, I feel bad at what's going on with the head coaches so far early on in the season like this. Uh, the NFL season, the way their schedule is, uh, the way they don't have preseason, the teams aren't ready. September's a mess. It's up and down. You know, one week a team bl gets blown out, and the next week they're blowing out somebody else while they're winning. Um, and it's, I don't think it's fair to the head coaches. It's hard to get them ready. And, and it's, 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 has sent anybody mastered the fact that you can actually get your team ready after really nothing going on preseason wise you don't even play your starters and then september comes around and you got to get all this going right away and, and it's up and down and you got to find the rhythm and and it's a mess and like i said if you just say around 500 getting out of uh september and into october you're going you're doing okay because then maybe you find your rhythm your mojo and your team is decent then you can get hot and then you play it out. And that's what happens a lot in the NFL now. It ha happens a lot. All right. Um, so, yeah, the, the, the potential firing of other coaches that's brewing right now in the NFL itself. And we'll see how it plays out. Uh, let's go to another game. Okay. Besides this Browns game that we just went through, Detroit and Dallas. Dallas. Three and two really has not looked great. But they've weathered a storm. They're injured. 
they're going up against a really good Detroit team. If there's another good team in the NFL that I've been impressed with so far and is Detroit Lions. Washington and Detroit in the NFL, uh, NFC, I should say, are just the two best teams I've seen so far. Dallas at home can go four and two, though. And if they beat Detroit, then you got to be, yeah, you got to give Dallas a lot of love there. And they're going to get a lot of love if they beat Detroit. Um, Detroit wins on the road like this, and then Detroit is a hot topic. No doubt about that. But, uh, you know, Dallas, three and two. Uh, they beat a Jet team last week that um, you got to give Dallas, I mean, a Steeler team last week. You got to give them a, a lot of credit. Um, to go into Pittsburgh and do what they did, but it wasn't like they, they beat them up. Like Dallas struggled in Pittsburgh. Matter of fact, Steelers had a chance to win the game, you know, NFL way, last possession of the game, it seems like. But Dallas has to show more than what they've been putting up, but they're three and two, and there's time to grow more and get healthier, and they're missing some guys like a lot of teams are. But getting to four and two and beating Detroit, it's a big step to be after six weeks of football. And we're going to keep an eye on that with Dallas itself. Um, but if Detroit wins in Dallas, you're going to be all over Dallas, uh, Detroit's um, bandwagon right away. I like Detroit. I do. I like Detroit. I like the quarterback. I like their offensive line. I like the running game, the running attack. Quarterback makes plays. He's got some receivers. That defense is good. I mean, it's just, it's not great, but I like it. Uh, and I like how they are, and a, and a head coach. This, we got to go even further than that. The head coach, you got to love him too. All right, let's go on to uh, a big game, Monday Night Football. Um, it's going to have a lot of attention. Um, this is like a first place game, even though the Jets have not looked great in the last couple of weeks. <laughs> but uh, they very well keep 5-0. and oh. You know, they didn't get destroyed. They just lost a lot of stupid close games without scoring points. And um, we'll see what happens. They just fire their coach, right? They just fire their head coach. And now the Jets can go three and three. Buffalo could be three and three. And the AFC East is up for grabs. Monday Night Football in New York, okay? And a lot of eyes. Two good quarterbacks or two very good quarterbacks and a lot of people are familiar with. Uh, historically, and a guy, you know, in Buffalo that is just uh, one of the most popular, great quarterbacks right now, and, you know, but we'll see what happens. A New York, a New York kind of thing, Buffalo, New York, coming down to play the Jets in the New York City, New Jersey area. And, um, but it's a game that um, Jets lose that game. They're two and four, the firing, all that's going to spin a lot, a little bit in New, in New York, but also throughout the NFL. You know, um, the quarterback situation there is going to really get brewed up a little bit more in New York um, if things don't look good on offense. Um, and that's a big story. And New York media is going to be all over it. Uh, <laughs> then you have Buffalo, a team that looked so good early on and then the last couple of weeks and, and a, a tough loss last week. So um, a great game, a great matchup. I'm looking forward to it. the games I just went through. All of them I love. I love all. I mean, they're all going to be close. Most of them are, you know, are close. I think Washington is the only team that has been impressive of knocking out a team, you know, and winning big convincingly. That's that's the only thing I've been noticing uh, in a consistent basis, too. All right. Uh, I've got a couple more things to go through, and then we're out of here. And um, it's sports related. <laughs> it's sports related. And let's start with um, a story that some people are tired of. And I was hesitating to show it, but I said, what the heck? All right. Yeah, it's it's the love story in Kansas City. Okay. Someone told Ta Troy Aikman from ESPN, former Cowboy quarterback. Now he's a commentary for the Monday Night Football games that Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift may have already been engaged or they are engaged to each other might actually be engaged. So, all right, it is what it is. It's, if it happens, it's that's fine. Right. But it's going to be news. And here we go. 
<laughs> I mean, it's like a soap opera kind of thing going on in the NFL. It's been like ever since this relationship began and in, in winning Super Bowls in Kansas City has helped that, you know. Um, but knowing Troy Aikman, he would not say something like this unless he felt pretty comfortable um, where he found the source of information from or whoever told him or where maybe he wouldn't just say this. He's a pretty guarded guy, um, Troy. And uh, it is what it is. And um, if it happens, beautiful. <laughs> if it happens. And uh, there you go. Taylor Swift uh, supposedly is engaged to Travis Kelsey. All right. You're over that yet? All right, I am too. All right, my last story, one last one before we get out of here. And um, we go to Las Vegas as the big, big uh, tearing down and exploding buildings of old hotels and casinos have dropped down. It happened again. It's, I, I've, I've witnessed them in person. It's a big spectacle for the Vegas area. Um, but there, here it is. The Tropicana is gone. That's the that's an actual photo shot of the Tropicana. Okay, it's gone. Happened a couple of days ago. And what's going there is the once Oakland A's of baseball, the Las Vegas A's of baseball stadium will be built right there. Right there. You can see the New York, New York. You can see the the MGM, right? You can see right where it's located. And that's where the baseball stadium will be built. And uh, great spot. <laughs> it's going to be more going on. Just baseball there, I'm sure. Concerts and stuff. I mean, it's it's going to be a hot spot for Vegas itself. But that's where the old Tropicana was. And uh, I'm sure a lot of you who've been to Vegas made your way through there once or twice. It's been there for a very long time. I have memories there too. So, uh, but uh, there it is. If you have it, and uh, if you don't care, oh well, <laughs> you don't care. <laughs> but it's sports related, right? It's a little sports related to it. But other than that, folks, we got to get out of here. Okay, we got to go. All right. I hope you enjoyed Hannah time. Cornelius Brad Hannah, big sports weekend, more baseball, more football. We got hockey season, ba basketball season. This is the time of the year, college football, right? Good times, right? If you like sports and, and uh, rooting for your team itself. But let's get out. On Global Sports Broadcasting Network, have a great weekend. Be safe. Keep loving your heart. And remember, love always wins. Bye, everybody. Enjoy.